Hello and welcome to another edition of The Daily. I'm Samantha Eric here with Simon Borg. And well, Simon, big news. Aaron Johansson has been cleared by FIFA to play for the U.S. team today against Bosnia, creating some more options for Klinsman up top. Who is he going to go with? Well, I think Johansson just joined the group. He's still learning how they play. I don't think he throws them out there this early. I actually think the Bosnian game is a lot more important for Eddie Johnson. Look, we saw what he can do against CONCACAF opposition in the Gold Cup, but now against top-notch European competition away from home on European soil, how does he do? I think he should get the start up top. Uh, the question is, can he pair up with Josie Altador? In that case, maybe Johnson has to play out on the wing, which sets itself up for a 4-2-3-1 formation for Jurgen Klinsmann, which against a tough opposition like Bosnia, it's not out of the realm. But of the debutants, though, I think John Anthony Brooks has the best shot at starting. The U.S. right now are thin at center back after Michael Orozco Fiscal had to pull out. And it's fairly easy to put in a central defender and slot him into the system the U.S. has. Uh, so I think Brooks gets a start, Johansson potentially off the bench, but we'd like to see how he pairs up with Altador. So hopefully Altador is still in the game by then. Well, we'll have to see what happens later today. You can catch U.S. take on Bosnia at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPN2 and Unima. Continuing with the U.S. men's national team, last night head coach Jurgen Klinsmann had an interview with ESPN FC's Roger Bennett, which Bennett was asking him about what else Clint Dempsey, but also talked about Omar Gonzalez and Landon Donovan, whose contracts end this season. And it seemed like Klinsmann gave a bit of a veiled message here about what league and where he thinks they should go. What did you think? Well, that's one of Klinsmann's mantras since he took over. Pushing guys, play at a higher level, go to Europe, shoot for the Champions League. I think he's got to back off now because it's blowing up in his face. The U.S. player thinks differently. Clint Dempsey, he played in Europe. He played in England. He knows what the level is. And... If he's coming to MLS, that sends a message. Uh, if guys like Graham Zussi go to the U.S. national team and outperform guys who are in Europe, that sends a message. I don't think the gap is what Jurgen Klinsmann perhaps thinks it is. And you're seeing U.S. players basically make that statement for him. Graham Zussi re-upping, Matt Beasley re-upping, Omar Gonzalez talk of him signing on as a DP, and we'll see what happens with Landon Donovan when his contract runs out. Who's to say that he doesn't remain in MLS as well? All right, well, speaking of U.S. players wanting to play in MLS, last night Jermaine Jones took over the U.S. men's national team Twitter feed where a fan asked him, would you play in MLS? He said, of course, his contract ends next summer he would definitely play in MLS. He was basically saying, MLS, come get me. My contract's up. And I believe he will be an MLS player next summer. And look, he'll only be 32. So I think he could be a real valuable asset to any team. Look, LA Galaxy, New York Red Bulls, even the Chicago Fire, I think, might be in the running and could use a player of his ilk in the central midfield. He's really a great passer, underrated passer. Um, so I think him, his arrival, though, could continue this push after Dempsey, then Jermaine Jones. You have all these young Americans who've tried their hands at international soccer. The Jared Jeffries, Connor Doyle's coming back as well. The balance definitely tilting in MLS's favor when it comes to the player flow. It's a nice little domino effect yep. we have going. All right, well, we want to know who you would like to see from the U.S. men's national team in MLS, so leave a comment in the section below. <laughs> Moving on to MLS news, Simon, some big stuff coming out of Toronto last night. Potential player edition, what's going on? Not just any player, designated player. Maximiliano Urruti, who fans in Toronto have heard about now for several months, long protracted negotiations to try to land him. It seems like a deal could finally get done. He's in Toronto, the team announcing that they're hoping to strike a deal by the end of the week. Now, fans might be scratching their heads. Wait, the, the transfer window has closed already. Well, if you put in the request for his international transfer certificate before the window closes, then after it closes, you have a chance to then work out a deal as long as that request was put in before. So Uruti potentially coming to help Toronto, an attack that's been fairly uh, feeble, if you will, and he's going to give them a boost. All right, another team with some changes on the field, New England Revolution, Juan Agudelo is making his return. Even though he signed with Stoke City and will be going there at the end of this season, yep. he has said he wants to remain a strong part of this team and help them make it to the playoffs. Also, son, Charlie Davis coming back. How are they all going to fit in on this team? Yeah, it's interesting. Agadello coming back from a knee sprain he suffered in the Open Cup. He says he's just about ready to play, but I think Jay Heaps has an interesting decision here. You just signed Charlie Davies, uh, and they play really with a one forward setup there, up top. 
Agadello and Davies could potentially play wide, but I think you got to put all your eggs in the Davies basket. You've signed him, you potentially want him maybe in the future, you want to evaluate him properly. Give him all the minutes, Agudelo's leaving. Right, we'll have to wait and see what Jay Heaps decides to do with the squad. That's all we have for the Daily today. We'll be back tomorrow with more.